I suppose it started when I was a boy living in Essex, uh, but there was no real no stargazing, just too much light pollution from London. But I was a bit of a science fiction nerd. Um, I'm, I'm really into my Star Trek and I love Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And that really got me into it. And it was just more of the fascination of what was out there um, and how things worked. And that kind of triggered me to kind of like want to learn more and start by looking at the stars. My dad was an engineer. He was quite a smart engineer, he loved his science. And I remember when we used to go on holidays to, to France, seeing that wonderful night sky. And I think he must have felt he wanted to inspire his son with science. So he bought me a copy of Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time when it came out. I think I must have been about 14 and 15, I think. It really just kind of engaged me, it really got me thinking and what was out there and I wanted to know more really. But it's after reading Stephen Hawking that he kind of actually described what black holes were, how they formed. They just grabbed my attention really, just how they worked, I mean the, the silly laws of physics that work around it, the silly situations that you can find yourself in, like spaghettification and redshifting and time travel and wormholes. And then, so that's why I started looking at stars and then studying how they actually worked. So I went on to study physics at Surrey University because I really enjoyed all the stuff on black holes. But I actually wanted to do a course on, on in environmental protection. They had to cancel it and I had to do straight physics. But the other person who did it was a girl called Emma, who is now my wife of more than 20 years. I was on a trip to Glastonbury and enjoying the sights and the sounds and the smells as everybody does. And I remembered my passion for environmental protection. I signed up to be a volunteer for the South Downs National Park when I came back uh, from Glastonbury uh, and then uh, over the years I've worked my way up from a volunteer to a lead ranger to now the Dark Skies officer. One winter evening my boss and I were just kind of testing the view of the stars and we decided to see if we could measure how dark the sky was and see what we could do with it. And when we went out there, we pressed the button, we saw the magic number that was above the minimum requirement. It was at that moment we kind of realised that we could make South Downs National Park uh, into a bit of a stargazer's paradise. But only if we kind of acted to protect it in the right way. The mission to be a dark skies is a long, difficult process and it really starts with being able to prove you've got a dark sky in the first place. So we had to develop a dark sky quality map and that would involve me going around, driving around in the South Downs for three years on cloudless, moonless nights, which you don't get many of in the UK, just taking uh, values of the sky quality. We wanted to join this worldwide family of just amazing landscapes that all kind of share this great dark sky. And they range from anywhere from like, the Arches National Park to some lovely big parks here in Colorado to some over in Japan, all over the world. So we felt if we could be part of that family, it would be really giving everybody a really good signal for places where you can really enjoy that connection to nature. Really the South Downs isn't a stereotypical national park. Unlike the American Dark Skies Reserves, people live here uh, and when we ask people for their support, people were telling us just how much they value being able to bring their children here to see the Milky Way. It seemed to be just as inspired by the South Downs at night as if they were in daylight. It seemed to touch on them almost on a spiritual level. Everybody remembers where they were when they first saw the Milky Way and um, when I do my talks I I say this and I can see the audience smiles light up because everybody instantly remembers where they were. And my first time was when I was about 11. I was camping with my, uh, my parents in a French campsite uh, on a nice summer evening. And I remember just looking up at the stars and within about 20 minutes I was looking at something I'd never seen before. And uh, it was the centre of the Milky Way. And for a brief second I had a kind of like comprehension of the scale of the galaxy. And that kind of feeling of vastness has always stayed with me. I've never been able to repeat it. Uh, I think it was a, an utterly unique moment, but um, yeah, like I say, it sticks with everybody forever. Dark skies are not just important to people, but they're very important to wildlife and to the integrity of, of the landscapes. We all need darkness, we all need to get away from the lights. Some species of birds and animals really do rely on darkness to function. In our connection with the countryside is important also for our health and well-being, and that's been scientifically proven. But what I find even more magical is our connection with something even bigger than Earth. Because there is no view on Earth, one we can share with billions of others that makes us question your own existence. And it's that connection between the sense of self and the sense of purpose that the stars bring. 2016, uh, in May, we achieved Dark Sky Reserve status for the entire South Downs National Park. We wanted to open it out to all stargazers of all ages and all levels of interest. So we pinpointed the best stargazing spots or the discovery sites as we call them all across the South Downs. And these are places that are very accessible, usually around car parks. 
somewhere up high that provide the best kind of stargazing. And we set about organising what has become now our annual and very popular Dark Skies Festival. As Dark Sky Rangers, with our telescopes and technology, we get to start people on their, on their journeys. When you're able to show the rings of Saturn or the ice caps of Mars through a telescope and see the, see the look on their faces, it's just it's one of the best feelings you can get really because you're really introducing people to something they've never seen before. And just like the Milky Way, they're never going to forget it. So being able to share that experience is fantastic of, of people of all ages. It doesn't have to be stuff that's uh, far away. The moon is actually one of the best things you can look through at a telescope. It's lovely and bright. It changes throughout the month. You get to see different features. And watching it move through an eyepiece is incredible because you get to see the craters move right across the eyepiece and you get a sense that you're almost like Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong ready to descend down to the lunar surface yourself. And it's always one of those staple wow moments in the dark skies, stargazing events, particularly for the kids in the schools we work with because they've never seen the moon this close. So really, I mean, dark skies don't have to start with dark sky objects. They can just start with our nearest orbital neighbor, which is the moon. So we've got lots of discovery sites. We have 10 uh, and they do range in quality of light between them. So we have some all the way in the west in Winchester. Uh, the Science Centre, which is a bit bright, but then we've got some really good dark sky sites within the middle, Iping Common, Harting Hill, Bigner Hill, and towards Brighton Way, Devil's Dyke and Ditchland Beacon. They all offer different experiences and different opportunities to kind of do different things. So I would just go and try and visit them all at some point. What makes the uh, South Downs of the Dark Sky Reserve so special, it's, it's that's because it's on our doorsteps. In about 20 minutes or so, we can connect with nature and our dark skies in the ways you can't do anywhere else on the South Coast. One of my favourite places to look up is St Hubert's Church uh, in Charlton. On a clear night, if you stand in the right place, it looks like the Milky Way actually protrudes out the top of the church. On a good day, you'll actually get the Cross of Cygnus above the Cross of the Church, and it's a great kind of juxtaposition. It's an incredible view um, and that's the first time I really had good success with astrophotography and one of my favourite pictures I used for the very first page of our application just to show what the South Downs offers with our dark skies. I mean it's great to take pictures of dark sky objects but I actually quite like taking pictures of the landscape and the stars above it and that's the real connection that the South Downs offers. There's this lively trade-off between uh, urban uh, and celestial light. Um, we all think that we don't like lighting, but actually we do. We do need lighting and everybody needs it. So really it is, I call it the battle of the photons. It's a, the trade-off between photons we do like and those we don't. Uh, and it can create an amazing spectacle. Yes, they are sources of pollution, but they do have their redeeming features. It's all part of our living landscape. Lights above us and lights below us, as long as we can keep those lights under control. One of the things in the sky that I, I never really get bored of looking at uh, is Orion and it's a very distinctive constellation with a, with a bright belt and bright stars. It's one of the most recognisable constellations across the world. Unlike the parks overseas that have no lighting, we have a full range of, of lighting threats. The good thing about our dark skies though is we can all do something to help protect it. At the very domestic level we can all look at our own lights on our houses, we can lower the lamps, we can avoid using bulbs that generate more light than we need and we can even ask the council to tolerate light dimming schemes or even changing the colour temperature which is very very important for, for looking at the stars. But above all just get interested. Get out into the downs or even in your back gardens. Embrace the darkness. Don't be scared of the dark. Let it trigger those feelings of wonder that are lurking deep within your DNA. Embrace that connection we've all had that we can illuminate out of our existence. Who knows where it will lead?